Hey, Sam. How are you? Hi, Ad. Nice to see you. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing about continuations today. Now, a continuation is a structure that lets a programmer um, say, I'm at this point, stick a bookmark in here. I'm going to go do something else for a while. And then I want to come back here and resume computation at this point with my environment uh, and just do the rest of the computation. Okay? That's yeah. a continuation. This is an example of continuation. Uh, uh, we call Farkle, which is going to, uh, in this case, um, uh, run our continuation and just write, uh, just use the caller to do the write line. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, so we're going to call it, and Farkle is a meta predicate. Uh, it gets past foo, which is the goal of it. So, yeah. uh, Farkle is just going to um, call as a continuation. It's just going to call uh, its goal repeatedly and, uh, for all of its, uh, uh, you know, uh, using a usual kind of repeat fail type loop. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then it's going to um it's going to uh uh keep getting the answer back and in this case just print it out and continue okay so if if i was gonna sort of guess what this program is gonna do um so you, you it's you've got the right line goal so it's gonna write um it's gonna write foo mm -hmm. um, and you've got this reset thing with three places, not sure what that does at this point. Then you're gonna, from that, you're gonna write line all. Presumably this reset thing is gonna call foo and we're gonna somehow print the numbers one to five. That's my guess. I might no, be it's not <laughs> quite, because okay. what will happen is reset, um, reset is, uh, is just a, um, uh, made a predicate like like call or once yeah and um, that uh, that makes a um, that calls its goal now if its goal just finishes then it, it acts just like call mm -hmm. if its goal uh, calls if its goal fails it just fails uh, but if its goal calls shift then it's going to return two things a ball which is the argument to shift um, it's actually a cop uh, or excuse me it, it's a uh, uh, the argument to shift and a continuation which is a kind of uh, which is a callable term and then Later on, we can we can call the continuation, and uh, execution will resume in foo. Okay. 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 So what this is going to do is repeated is print the numbers, but it's going to do it from this from this right line. Right. Up in the collar. So here's what's going to happen. We call main. And now it's going to print um, foo, you were right. And then uh, when we go into the reset, it will now call foo, which will uh, get a one, uh, set end to one, and uh, you know, or bind end to one, and then do a shift, which will cause this to return. The ball, is going to be one and right. the con continuation is this uh you know callable term yeah. and um so since continuation is non-zero this process will terminate um if if uh 
Um, if goal completes normally, then uh, then ball and continuation will both be bound to zero. So we can test right. against them. Uh, in this case, I, I test against the continuation because I'm not certain that zero isn't a valid value for, val for ball. So I will just recurse and then I will use my continuation as the new goal. Okay. Yeah. So it, instead of it being foo, it's the goal is continuation. Right. Which yeah. is why we get this mess here. Right? Right, yeah. Okay. Because that's being printed by um, that first right line goal. Yes. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so once we get this continuation back, there's a bunch of interesting things we can do with it. Um, uh, for one thing, in some circumstances, we might not want to uh, resume execution. Um, for example, if we're doing some kind of search, uh, we might be calling something that goes through a complicated tree, and it says, hey, I found this. Is this the right thing? But we, what we might decide is that that actually means that chunk of the tree is not interesting. Yeah. And we can just discard the continuation. Um, and that does not cause memory leaks or any of that. It's a valid thing to do. Um, what we might do, as, what, as we've done in our example, is to uh, do something else and then call the continuation. In this case, the something else is a right line. Yeah. And then and then we just, you know, Farkle becomes this uh, uh, recursive loop. Call and, uh, call and then write the result. Um, it's valid to call it multiple times. Okay. Uh... uh so, for example, if we only wanted to print every other result of foo, we could actually, like, um, you know, or, or if we wanted to, um, you know, we could uh, uh, go ahead and um, maybe, maybe we want to have these things um, count through and... Uh, count through some sequence of doing something, but we've got several of them, and we're firing off one and the other, and sometimes we want to rerun the same one. That's perfectly valid. We could collect up a bunch of continuations and, and resume them out of order. Uh, we can actually backtrack into the reset, which will cause us to backtrack into foo. So let's look at what happens if you backtrack into something. So, um, if I say back, I'm going to get C and then A, okay? Okay. Now, if I hit semicolon and backtrack, I'm going to, it's going to back up. The right line, of course, doesn't have a choice point, so it'll back up into the reset. The reset will back up into P, and P will use its second clause. So is it going to write C then B? Yeah, it is. So we call back, we go into the reset, we, uh, we're going to go into P and it's going to come back. So we'll write a C and then we'll uh, continue on so we get the A. If at that point I hit the semicolon, we back up and uh, we uh, the right line doesn't have a choice point, we back up into the reset. The reset backs up into P, which does have a choice point because it's got two clauses. 
and it's going to take its second choice using the second clause. So the second clause is uh, going to give us uh, B. Okay, so my question is, if we put a, um, a, a, a new clause as the, as the first thing that P calls it, say right line, hello, then shift, then right line A, the behavior would be, when you call back, would be that reset P would call, call that, so it would right line that hello, then it would get to the shift, so it would um, go to the continuation, write C, then it calls the continuation, then it would write A. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. And then when it then backtracks, mm -hmm. um, we would go to the second class um, version Wait. of P, which doesn't have the 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 call before shift. So it wouldn't do anything then. It would just then just um, uh, go into shift again and write uh, C then B. Yes. So this is the program that you had, Anne. And I want to see if I put a right line. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I would expect is that we're going to, if I call back, it's going to call reset, which is going to call P. Mm -hmm. We're going to write lines. So we're going to test is going to be written to the screen. Then we're going to go to shift. So we're going to go back to here. Um, we're going to write a continuation. So it's going to be one of those weird terms. Then we're going to call the continuation. So then we're going to go back here. We'll write A. Then if I backtrack, we're going to go back to um, here. The right line won't have anything there, so it'll go back to here. And we're right. We'll then go to this. This will shift again. So mm -hmm. we'll get then get C. Then finally we'll get B. Correct. So I'm expecting that we would have test, then the continuation, then. Um, yeah, no, we're not writing the continuation, are we? Um, uh, uh, no. Uh, so you'll have test and then C. Test then C, then A, and then that will be the end. We we'll backtrack and we we'll get C then B. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. Sorry. Save that. it back up. Try again. Test C A. And we've got a choice by C, B. Great. Okay, that's what I expected. Okay, so what are these things good for? Uh, we can use them to uh, avoid uh, passing a lot of trash on the stack. Uh, you know this problem of, uh, especially before we had dicts, of having to have 14 arguments because you're passing things? Yeah. Um, you can instead, since you can bind... You can pass a ball that is partially bound and then return, um, you know, and then call the continuation after you've bound the unbound variable on the ball. And it will now be bound in, in the, uh, um, in the, uh, the callee, you know. Um, you can use this to kind of query for things that you don't that you only rarely need in some some large call tree okay and not have to pass them on the stack uh there are times when i go you know i wish i had except I, I i think about using an exception but exceptions are such a kind of boot in the face mechanism that i usually don't use them except for things that are truly error conditions yeah because they just kind of, but things like, oh, you don't have enough money in your account to complete that transaction, those kinds of exceptions, we yeah. usually don't throw an exception for that because it just, it's just too hard. Um, but 
using a uh, you know using a, a continuation, you could you could make a more flexible and, and reasonable ex exception mechanism. Uh, they were uh, actually added in uh, support of um, tabling. Right. Uh, so so uh, the, that's why we've got them. Um, okay. uh, and Paul Tarot's engines are built atop them. Right. You could set up a kind of implicit. Um, you can set up a state if you need to to retain state. This is a good way to do it. You could um, you could have get and set uh, balls, which your and you have your outer loop, then uh, then hold on to the to the actual structure that's storing the state, and then, you know, it would be in a recursive descent loop. You know, so would that be useful, for instance, say if I was making a, a website mm -hmm. and I want to maintain the state of the users uh, who are going through my website, um, maybe they've filled in some, a form or they've, they've taken some actions through my website and I'm tracking that, could I, um, store that as a state for that user, and then um, then call that continuation um, when that user logs back in, put them back into the, a similar state or something like that. Yeah, that you could you could um, you could store that in the session data. Um, yeah. Uh, for example, if your if your website implemented an expert system, yeah, where it's going to be down in some messy tree. And then you realize you need to ask the user for more information. Yeah. Uh, then yes, you you at that point, of course, because you're in, in HTTP land, you're going to have to essentially terminate your your execution. You're going to have to round trip back to the you know complete the HTTP transaction. Yeah. So um, so you would just. Uh, take a continuation and store it in the session. Finish, uh, you know, by throwing some ball that has whatever the feedback is to the user, the question, yeah. and and uh, uh, then your higher level would store that in the session, output that to the user with a, a form. And then when it came back again, it would bind that on an unbound variable on the ball. Yeah. Uh, it would bind the answer to the unbound variable on the ball and then run the continuation. And yes, yeah. that, would, that would considerably simplify a, an expert yeah. system website. Um, so, but I'm talking about a slightly different situation where I... Uh, want to basically have mutable state as I run. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to be calling a certain retract all over the place. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's that's not a great practice to be calling a certain retract all over the place. So yeah. uh, it's slow for one thing. Um, yeah, it's also really unstructured. It's hard yeah. to know what your program does. But if you use a continuation, you can say, hey, set variable foo to seven mm -hmm. with a, some kind of set ball. And then just have a list, uh, an association list, and then you look up foo and you replace it. And since you're already in some kind of uh, tail call recursion uh, for the main loop, you just replace that in the list. Okay. If you're implementing logging, you could implement logging as a um, as a continuation. I guess to you know to finish up my little list of uses, I would say uh, probably iterators, um, which is kind of what we we showed, and then coroutining and 
uh, and then making transducers. Um, transducers, what are they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something for us to find out. So, yeah. just uh, another question for you, Anne. Um, would you say that uh, uh, writing code with continuations is um, a, an, an imperative way of coding, or or is it does it affect the declarative meaning of of the program you're doing? Or you, would you, if you've written a prolog program, would you, um, and you had a continuation, does it depend on how you use it, the how it affects the logical properties of your of your predicate? Yeah, it's a pretty non-logical extension. I mean, yeah. these things were designed for functional programming, and yeah. and I have that question as well. Um, I, I uh, let me try to to build like a real real life scenario with a continuation in it. Okay. Is um, you ask me for advice on something. Yeah. And I think about it, and then realize I need more information from you. Okay. So I ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I get the answer, and then I continue on. Okay. So in some sense, it's saying a, a, a logical or a declarative uh, interpretation is the answer is three as long as it's a Thursday. Yeah. So, for example, I, so in a in a, say I'm, I, you're you're the continuation kind of thing, and I'm the the other thing. I I'm performing a search, so I say, can you search for a term that meets these requirements? And you start searching for these requirements, but you come across um, a term that is similar or something, and you say, and you might ask me about is this okay is this near enough yeah that would be a one possibility yeah. right is is i'm going to do a search and i'm going to offer you alternatives yeah and for one reason or another we don't want to do that using the normal backtracking yeah uh mechanism but um yes implementing a kind of pseudo backtracking is a use uh, there are a couple of things I would warn you about. One is that uh, continuations aren't necessarily small. Uh, they save kind of the entire state of the of the um, program, and uh, I was using them kind of promiscuously, and yeah. and discovered that I had many megs of continuations around. Uh, and it clearly wasn't going to scale. Uh, okay. The other, the other thing I was I would warn you about is that the debugger doesn't. Um, the debugger does some a few steps of strangeness when you walk through a continuation. Okay. It will eventually come out the other side, but I recommend to anybody using continuations that they set up a toy one and walk through it in the the graphic debugger before yeah. actually trying to debug them. Okay. That's some good advice. So that's continuations. Okay, thanks, Anne. Thanks for explaining that to me. I think I've got a, a, a reasonable grasp of what they are. Um not quite sure when I will will use them to start with. Um, I think maybe for some some web uh, sites it might be a useful tool. Um, so it's it's just nice to have a new piece of information in in the power that Prolog's got. That I another tool that you can use when you're when you're when you're writing your programs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. I think, again, we've survived another programming with prologue.